Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome all of you to the live program number 124 in Orthopedic Principles. We are back with us, Stella faculty, Professor Piri Logitos from Milan, Italy. Professor Tos is the Chief of Hand Surgery and Reconstructive Microsurgery at the CTO Hospital Trauma Center in Milan, Italy. He's been the former president of the Italian Society for Microsurgery and currently serves as the chair of the Hand Trauma Committee of the European Federation for Surgery of the Hand. He's also a professor at the Milan University. Professor Tos has 123 international publications and a multitude of articles in local and national level journals, and he's published several book chapters. So today, it's my great honor to introduce you to Professor Pilogi Tos for yet another fantastic lecture on surgical management of fingertip injuries. Over to you, Professor Tos. Hello, everybody. Thank you for this nice introduction. It's my honor to be here with you, Dr. Gopalang, then and share with all of you my experience of surgery of the nail bed and fingertip. Uh, I think that uh, I, I, this topic is very, very useful for uh, uh, resident and young uh, surgeon that face in the emergency, this kind of uh, problems. The fingertip is done by skeletal elements, nail complex, the perionicum, and the fibrous connective tissue that is the subcutaneous tissue that is the pulp of our finger. The perionicum is the old tissue over the nail plate, is the proximal fold, the cuticle, and the lateral folds. And uh, the paronicum is all the tissue under the nail plate, the sterile matrix and the turtle matrix and the hyponicum and the distal groove. The vascularization is very, very nice. There is a supply and there is anastomosis from dorsal to volar side of the third pharynx. And there is a very nice um, nerve, uh, 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 for the sensibility of the finger. This is the uh, P tree vascularization of our finger. This is a very nice description by Francesco Brunelli. 45% have this U-shaped uh, artery in the, in the tip of the finger. 37% of the Y-shaped artery in the distal path. So there is a one artery in the middle of the finger in the distal third of the pulp. And there is an H fascia vascularization in 20% of fingers. These are the connection between the dorsal and the parmal uh, part. And this is the perionicum. This is the proximal fold, the cuticle and the lateral fold. The nail plate is uh, 0 0.5 millimeter thick. And uh, there are three layers of keratinocyte. The paronicum state give the aspect of our nail. If we have a bone loss, we have a hook nail. If we have a large phalanx, this is a racket nail. If we have an arthritis, a pincher nail. So everything is going not in the right way, give a problem to our plate. If I have a loss of the nail bed, there is a nail plate adhesion failure, and we will see the problem soon. So the germinal matrix, a little bit of physiology, start 1.5, 0 0.5 millimeters before proximal to the insertion of uh, the extensor tendon. And it produced the nail and the grow is one millimeters about in 10 days. So it's two, three millimeters in one month, the grow of a nail. The sterile matrix is specialized to give the adhesion from the nail plate and the sterile matrix. It's very important tissue, it's so specialized, and if there are some problem in that tissue, there is a problem of adhesion. The hyponychium is the distal part of the uh, nail. The normal growth, as I, I told you, is two to five millimeters per month, two months, 
to appear the uh, new nail in the proximal row. And there is, uh, we have to follow the patient for six months to complete the regrow of our nail. So every case you see in this lecture, we, are, we waited for to six months. So it's not so easy to see the results of surgery of the nail. Uh, the grow stops for three weeks, then starts. And when you see a line like that in the, in the nail, this is line of bone. And this is how it, the nail is grow be, between the trauma and the day you are seeing the patient. So the injuries can be isolated or uh, complex uh, and combined. Uh, I do not speak about finger amputation, but we will see also some flaps that we can use in volar and dorsal side for uh, reconstruct our fingertip. Our nail bed injuries are 10% of all trauma, 10 to 25% of all the finger trauma, 80% of hand emergency. So it's very important number of trauma of this part. Associated lesion normally are 70%, uh, a lot of pulp, distant phalanx fracture, pulp lesion and fracture is 25%, uh, another lesion of the finger on the hand. The mechanism of trauma is normally a crush injury, a, from 50 to 80%, the finger is crushed and smashed between something. 60% need a repair. More male than female, often, often long finger, and the type of lesion is simple in one third of cases, and in one third is a stellate laceration, so it's a crushing lesion. Avulsion of the Nail, uh, uh, the nail is, it happens 15% of times, and there is very rare the, the lesion to the germinal matrix. These are the sequelae. These are the um, picture we do not want to see. If we treat in emergency very nicely our fracture and our uh, nail problems, these can be avoided, but sometimes, also happen. And so this is the a defect, defect of adherence. This is a nail dystrophy because of a bone spur. This is a split nail because there is no, uh, the growing of the nail in the proximal fold. This is another defect of adherence. This is a reaching deformity because there is a, a lesion like here in the fertile, fertile matrix. And this is another split nail. These are nail remnants. These are very uh, bad for the patient. They normally, we have, they, we have to remove this because they impair the function. And the hook nail, we will talk about that at the end, if one of the most difficult problem to solve in the, the nail um, sequelae. This is not a sequela. This is a, a nice question that we, we do always to our student. This is uh, uh, called median canaliform dystrophy of Heller. This is when a, a guy self-inflicted to himself a trauma compulsory to the finger. So this is not a illness. If the patient stopped to do that, it healed perfectly. So it's not a problem. This is uh, the classification of uh, lesion of uh, uh, the nail bed. Subungal hematoma, nail bed or matrix lesion, loss of substance, plate, bed and roof, and matrix lesion. I tell you that uh, I have not, but there is not an evidence-based medicine on this topic. I know that uh, this is uh, orthopedic principle site, so we, we would like to have evidence-based, but we have not at the moment an evidence based on this topic. So I tell you, it is my, our uh, way to solve, to treat this patient. Uh, Subungual hematoma is uh, very frequent. Uh, there is a blood between the, the sterile matrix and the nail. If this is more than 50% than the, the, the nail, we have to open uh, a little hole 
to permit the blood to go out. Uh, a simple drainage is very useful. It's not necessary, it's not compulsory to do a nail bed inspection. We will see in a few minutes when is necessary to do that. What I learned from Christian Dumontier, that is a French surgeon that uh, um, is very, very, very involved in nail surgery. He wrote a lot of things about that and he wrote the chapter of uh, Encyclopédie Médico-Chirurgicale, that is a very important French uh, book, uh, to teach me how to do this. Uh, if we use a blade and progressively we thin the nail, we can create a very much bigger hole that uh, um, in this way with a clip and uh, is not painful for the patient. Then this is what happened in two months of grow, three months of grow. So you can say to this patient, we are going on very well. The nail is growing very well and is distalizing perfectly. There are no problem at all. When we have to explore the nail bed, if there is an association with the hematoma and a compound fracture, if there is an association of the hematoma with germinal matrix lesion, and there is a nail plate avulsion. So if there is a nail plate avulsion, it's already open and you can explore the nail bed. These are our instruments. It's very important to do all this surgery with a magnification and uh, 670 absorbable monofilament, uh, not colored PDS is much better. And uh, normally we give interrupted or continuous suture to the nail bait, uh, opening and elevating the nail plate and uh, can be used for a freer elevator to do that. Normally this is a suture of our nail bed, then we reposition the nail on and uh, normally in the for the fracture is a needle is uh, enough to to solve the problem and the stabilization of the fracture if there is a proximal avulsion we is compulsory to put the nail bed in the fold is very important if there is a synechia or um, it 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 the um, uh, this part of the, uh, of the proximal fold heal with the matrix create uh, a, a problem to the new nail that have to grow. So we have to re-put the nail grow into the bed. So we have to do the proximal fold reinsertion with uh, a little bit of, uh, an uh, of obviously uh, there is an anesthesia to the finger and we have to re-put inside. When you see one, two day, three day after, there is a colleague that leave the nail on the top of the root, you have to re-put inside. It's very important to avoid problems and dystrophy for the nail. If the nail has to be stabilized, this is a good way. This is an X-shaped dorsal suture to keep the nail in place. And this is very nice not to use this part to give the stitch. In this way, you keep the nail into the fold and to keep the nail up to the, uh, the sterile matrix. A little hole always is done so the blood can go outside. I show you how if you really treat well, your finger can be very satisfactory the results. There is a compound fracture with an avulsion and we, we, we treat the fracture, we re-put the nail bed into the fall, we give a stitch, we treat the fracture and this is three months later with a very nice results. This is a, um, a history uh, of uh, Guy Fouché suggested this treatment. I suggest to you to use that. It's very, very nice. You use a nail, four zero, five zero needle, and you do an obanage of the nail plate. You don't care about the lesion of 
the sterile matrix, we only care about the treating of the nail bed and you have a very beautiful results at the end. All grow very well and you have no to repair the nail bed and to elevate the nail. This is a very nice paper, a nice way to solve the problem when there is a rupture, a fracture of the nail bed. If we have uh, a nail plate uh, uh, avulsion and the nail plate is not viable, uh, you can use silastic, you can use uh, a splint. There are on the market some splint about that. And we described a very easy way to do that is sterile infusion, infusion reservoir. This is sterile, you can use this plastic to solve the problem and to substitute the nail. That is very important to, to not have an adhesion, as I told you before. So you put a little piece of plastic, you do your hole, you can uh, do this, this uh, W to keep the, the nail into the fold. And this is the treatment that you have to keep. If you can, uh, one month, two months minimum, the, the more you, you, you keep this in, inside the finger, the better is. At the end, this is the results. Normally, when you have an avulsion, you can say to the patient that the results is really perfect. If you have a nail bed, loss of substance without available fragments, you can put your temporary splint, you can do an advancement flap, and you can put some uh, nail bed graft uh, to avoid uh, uh, problem to the nail. When you do a VY shape uh, flap from the volar side and you try to disepitalize the, the flap to have, uh, to avoid problem of adherence of the, the nail, every time put a little nail to discharge the tension of the UY advancement flap. Otherwise you have a hook nail, but we will see that in a few minutes. This is the way to put the nail. This is another lesson uh, by Guy Fouché. And you stop your flap and your, the, the, the pressure of your, of your flap and you avoid a uh, problem of hookness. This is when you have a problem in the sterile matrix. It's not, it's very nice in the book, but it's not very useful during the surgery. This is the Schenberg Johnson flap to close a problem in the center of the nail matrix, sterile matrix. These are germinal mitre region with the graft that we can take from the allux. Normally, we don't do that in emergency. This is normally the treatment of uh, uh, a nail bed, not adherence. Another trauma, if you treat uh, perfectly, in immediately this trauma, you can have very good results. You see the pulp, you put the nail in the fold, you put your nail for the fracture. At the end, you re can repair the nail bed. You put your substitute, you wait, and this is a result up to six months. And I think that it's really nice. And this is show you, if you really pay attention at the end, you can have a really nice result. And now we talk about digital amputation. Normally, uh, the best way to solve this problem is to replant. And to replant a finger is not always possible. So we need sometimes to, uh, other possibility and other kind of treatment. This is a very nice uh, way. You can reposition, a, reposition your part into the finger and sometimes you have very nice results. And this is another very kind and very nice treatment uh, suggested by, uh, ish, by uh, um, uh, a Japanese guy and uh, you, you put back your finger and you freeze the finger uh, for two, three days. And this in young guys and young patients 
works very well. This is the list of classification of fingertip injuries. And this is uh, uh, oblique in that sense, oblique in that sense, and transverse. Uh, I show you that sometimes a conservative treatment, uh, if you do not have a long bone uh, that is uh, to cover, is very, very nice. Occlusive dressing, in the, you change dressing once a week, uh, can give you really, really good results. Obviously, up to the first and second types uh, of Allen classification. It's like a lizard, the, the tip of the finger can grow very, very well. And at the end, you have a, a very nice result. Classically, I show you all the flaps that you can do in the volar part of the finger. Uh, I go a little bit quick probably, but just to show you how many are the possibility in this uh, uh, surgery. We have volar and dorsal flaps for fingers. The volar one, one uh, are subdivided in uh, homo-digital, hetero-digital, and free flaps. Homo-digital, it means that is from the same finger. And vuvuai, have you seen? The segmolar, the ven catasani flaps, all these flaps try to solve the problem with like with like with the sensibility and with a sensitive flap. From the dorsal part, we can use an adipofascial flap that is the turn 180 degree on our finger. We can use heterodigital flap from another finger to solve the problem to the neighbor finger. And this is for the thumb, but also for the long fingers. Tenor flaps, I think, but this is my opinion, that can be useful in young guys, not all people, because give um, a stiffness. But if you are very young, you, you don't know how to do other kind of flaps, this could be a good choice. And free flaps, if you are good with uh, microsurgery, this is very good reconstruction, is perfect, gives sensibility, perfect uh, texture, and perfect digit without other trauma to the hand. For the thumb is the same, we have volar flaps and dorsal flap. Volar, we have Vuvai, Mobra Iliot flap, and for the dorsal part, we have the dorsal ulnar flap, the kite flap that is from the second finger. We have the same ether digital flap we have in the long finger, and we have free flaps. Now I show you all these flaps, and I show you normally when we have to do this flap. Homo digital flaps request to intact digital vessel. Ether digital flaps and tenor flaps. These are um, drawing that uh, are done by Mr. Elliot that has a very huge experience on that. And we do a course together in Switzerland with Dr. Calcani every year, and these are the beautiful picture he gave me. So for this two type of uh, amputation, a VUI flap that is true atazoi or tranquilli leali neurovascular atazoi are very, very nice. As I told you before, in my opinion, you have always to put a needle to discharge the flap and to avoid hook uniformity. This is the results. And Venkatazami and Segmuller flap are raised on one axis of the finger and they uh, use this axis to advance the flap. Uh, Venkatazami is uh, all the finger is advanced and Segmuller flap are two flap, uh, one from one side and one to another that arrive in the top of the finger. This is the result. And this is in other cases. The Evans flap is the same, but we, with uh, another incision that permit to, to avoid some problems uh, elevating the flap. This is a very nice flap, is pivot flap, is a 90 degree rotation of the flap to cover the tip of the finger on one axis. This is a sensitive flap and very well vascularized. The flap is raisin 
just before the loss of substance, just proximally, and then advanced with 90 degree of rotation. And this is the result you can have at the end. This is the flap described by Francesco Brunelli. There is the son of uh, Professor Brunelli, our mentor in Italy. This is called also little Chinese flap because uh, it's a reverse flap from the base of the same finger and sometimes could be very, very useful. These are homo digital reverse flap that we know very well. In this case, this is the Adani technique. It's not like a littler that is uh, uh, taken from the tip of the pulp of the neighbor finger, but is uh, on the dorsum and on the sensory nerve in the dorsum of the finger. So in this way, you do not destroy the, 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 the neighbor finger and you have a very nice flap to cover your loss of substance. This is a little flap for a little finger. And this is what I told you before. This is a tenor flap. Many surgeons say that this is not a good flap because you have to close your hand, you, get, you give stiffness to your hand. But I think that uh, every one of us is different. If you can do microsurgery, you can do that. If you can do a flap, you can do that. But uh, tenor flap exists is in, in the armamentary of a surgeon. So if you do not do other flap, this could be a good option to not shorten the flap. Really important that the, the patient is supple because if is is not young, you have very big problem because you have to keep this position for 20, 25 days. This is when you detach the finger, you see which is very nice, the healing of the tenor and the healing of the palm. So we can use also the adipofascial flap from the dorsal of the, the arm. These are very nice flap that can cover the tip of the finger, or we can use a flap for the, the metacarpal flap to cover the dorsal part of the finger. This is not really a tip, of the finger, but uh, we have to know that also this flap can be used. This is uh, on the perforator of Quaba, one centimeter before the MP joint. And this is a propeller flap based on one of those. And in this particular case, we use also uh, the tendon, the extensor tendon of indices propius to rebuild uh, the extensor tendon of the index. And this is very nice operation. So the thumb is the same. We can do homo-digital and heterodigital flap. This is a little flap described in the radial part of the thumb by Francesco Brunelli another time. And this can solve the problem of the top of the, the, the thumb. A bipedical advanced flap is very, very nice, described by Moberg initially, changed by O'Brien and there is a, a new changing by Elliot uh, that I will show you now and is very nice to cover up to two centimeter of our thumb. This is the loss of thumb size. It's perfect for this kind of flap. All the pla flap is elevated on the two main vessel of the thumb and is closed in VY uh, shape at the end. And you see how we can raise the flap, advance the flap, then close directly. And this is the result at the end. And this is perfect because you have the sensibility, you cover your finger and you have no problem at all in the, the thumb. Uh, another heterodigital flap is possible. I don't use that uh, a lot. I prefer to do microsurgery, but every one of us is different. And so I will show you all the possibility. Dorsal thumb, this is a Western flap that is uh, uh, based on one side of the thumb. This is a kite flap, it's very, very useful nowadays only for the dorsal part and loss of substance of the thumb. And this is the result. Pay attention to the donor area, keep the flap 
in the lateral part, in the radial part of the, the index finger, not really dorsally as described in the, in the book, and leave the patient move. This can be very harmful the, where we, 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 we take the flap. This is another time the dorsocubital flap described by Francesco Ronelli, that uh, the, the, the blood arrives here in retrograde fashion from the other side in the uh, EP joint. And uh, this is what I like for the top of the finger, tip of the finger in very young patient. I use many times this kind of flap and this is my first choice in young patient because you do not lose anything. And if you lose something, you have every time an open door to other things to use in the hand. This is the pulp of the allox. It's very useful for a big loss of substance of our thumb. You go there and it's very easy, the dissection is very easy to re-give the same texture of a normal thumb without touching the hand with the same sensibility. And the dorosite, I normally leave this uh, healing for second tension and normally I have no problem at all. Venus flap uh, is very useful probably for that, but I prefer normal flap because Venus flap many times give problem of congestions and for me, it's not nice to follow the patient so uh, near. Which are the complications of our patient? This is uh, one of the last slides of uh, this talk. Nail dystrophy are very frequent if we have a problem of, of the, uh, not of the sterile matrix, uh, um, and the bone spikes, uh, sorry, uh, give a split nail or uh, malunions gives unguel dystrophy, loss of nail bed give nail plate adhesion failure and nail remnants has to remove uh, because often are discomfort for the patient. Infection are very rare. There are some chronic infection that should be cured, uh, but is really rare. Necrosis of the flap can happen, but it's not so frequent. Neuromas is a big, big problem. And uh, really we have not uh, uh, been solved the problem at all. To solve the problem of the hook nail, this is very, very difficult. Uh, normally we use a recession technique, so we cut, has a flap, the dorsal part of the finger, and we uh, put back the, the, the skin with the nail, and we do an advancement flap. I think that this is a very nice technique, only if the patient is very painful. If the patient is asking you to be better for cosmetic reason, I think that is not really a good indication because, because you can have not to success and uh, cold intolerance sometimes with this surgery. This is uh, the technique described by Christian Dumontier. So there is an advancement flap and uh, a, a recession of, as I show you. Local flaps are very useful to solve the problem of scar in the nail matrix. Speed thickness, Germinal matrix graft, it, there is uh, uh, this mark because it works only in 50% of cases and is not a lot. So you can try, but it's not, uh, the result is not uh, um, very um, reproducible. Sometimes you can remove all the nail and put a skin graft. And sometimes these give a better result than other technique where you can use also free nail transplant, but the nail at the end is never like a normal finger. So I don't think it's a good option for cosmetic reason, but it's a good option if you have a functional problem or pain. At the end, I think that the nail bed injuries, the timing and accuracy of the initial treatment is very, very important. 
magnification is compulsory and secondary procedure give not predictable results. Our decision making, there are no strict rules, but some rules I think that are very important. Put back your nail and uh, uh, leave the nail there the more most you can. And I thank you very much for our, your attention. And uh, 30 seconds more just to uh, introduce uh, the Congress of the European Federation of Microsurgery that will be in 2022 in Milan. And uh, we are thinking about probably it, it will be in 2024. We are thinking about that, but I wait you in Milan for this Congress. Thank you very much, Professor. Excellent presentation and very glad to see the excellent work that you've been doing at the hospital for many, many years. A few questions. One is, I mean, if you, you can stop sharing actually. There's an option called stop sharing. So then I can see your face. Yeah, thank you. Uh, one of the, uh, is, there's a, you mentioned a lot of flaps. I remember yeah. there's a, there's a flap based on the first dorsal metacarpal artery called the Quaba flap. Do you yeah. have any experience in using that? And can we use it to the tip? Or is it only till the uh, first yeah. be, uh, be joint? Yeah. Uh, this is a little bit out of our talk because it was a, a fingertip and not uh, the finger. But the Quaba flap is the flap based on the uh, perforator that is uh, very, very constant in the dorsal part of the end. Uh, if we do with this perforator a propeller flap and we turn 180 degrees, it's possible to arrive up to the tip of the finger. Uh, every time I did that, there is a little part of the end of the flap that suffer, but uh, it, it's normal in this kind of flap. You can you cannot go uh, more proximal more proximal than the wrist uh, uh, crease because otherwise it doesn't work. But you can use all this length and you can close for first intention in the dorsum. Uh, this is a way to use this metacarpal flap. The metacarpal flaps in more easy way can be raised with the pedicle done uh, by um, an adipofascial um, flap and then you can raise your flap in the dorsum of the end. So this technique permits to arrive up to the tip of the finger with really two, three centimeter of skin. Uh, this was described by Bakash and uh, it permits to arrive with all these uh, skin up to the tip of the finger. Normally use a pedicle from the normal finger to cover the dorsum of the injured finger. We can use that, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. The other common question is, uh, it's a very basic question. Will the nail grow if the sterile matrix and the germinal matrix, both are destroyed, are lost? If the nail doesn't grow, is the germinal matrix is not is destroyed. So the nail grow from the germinal matrix and go straight forward. If the germinal matrix is injured, the nail doesn't grow. If the sterile matrix is injured, the nail stay not attached to the to the the, the matrix. So you have a problem of, of adherence. If you have a problem in the germinal matrix, no nail at all. And okay. it's for that, that if you have a problem that uh, you have a split nail, you have a big problem. It's very difficult to solve. Because I remember in your slide, you mentioned clearly that if the ster uh, sterile matrix is lifted like this, you need to get it back. Is okay, it? the matrix is in the finger. When the nail is lifted out, 
you have no problem to the matrix. You have only to re-put the nail inside. The nail is uh, uh, useful to separate the top of the perionicum to the base. You need to take it separate and not have adhesion in the, in the roof. And the nail, it's useful only for that. The matrix give you a new nail and the, the old nail go away and the new nail grow. But it's not because you put inside the, that there is some germinal something. You put inside a nail. <laughs> the germinal matrix is in your finger. Okay. And I remember whenever we have been taught that you always try to preserve the nail because it acts like a splint, isn't it? It's important, yes. It's a splint, it gives you uh, uh, like, uh, um, uh, I, 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 that doesn't come in English to me, but is like a dressing, a normal dressing of your problem. You can, if you leave the nail there, it's much better. Yeah, and normally, uh, I don't say that. Normally, you do not give antibiotics. Okay. Only if you have problems. Otherwise, you can. That's you good. cannot. Thank give. you. The other one is uh, you mentioned about the flap that you. Flex the finger and keep it here. That's a Marburg. Is it called the Marburg advancement flap, or is there another name for it? I don't know who described that. The, the, the technique is uh, uh, the the name is thinner flap. Okay. So you open the thinner. You take your 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 skin and you put inside. There are many many surgeons against that. I try to explain that uh, we are not all the same. Some are very good. Some are. They are initially initiating uh, their uh, they, their um, skillness, so they are not so skilled. So I think that can be useful in young surgeon for young surgeon in young people. The other one is uh, regarding the flap that you harvest from the little finger, the yeah. neurovascular island flap or the littler flap. Yeah, I remember you mentioning that uh, you don't prefer it. But yeah, I don't use a lot of that because at the end you have a sensibility that is difficult to re, re uh, use in your brain. If you detach the, if you use the nerve, and you put your uh, part of the finger into the thumb, it's very difficult to have a, a reorganization in your brain. If you detach the nerve and you put there, it's a long operation and you sacrifice a little thing. So I prefer to do microsurgery. It's in my hand, microsurgery is easier, faster. You don't touch the hand and you don't use uh, other part of the hand. So in just for that, because I like micro, but if you don't know microsurgery, a little flap, a little air flap is a good option. So every one of us is different. And I think the term that is called as cortical disorientation, am I right? Yeah, yeah, is that. Okay. Is that. Thank you for that. And I think the uh, flap that you mentioned, Venkata Swami, is from actually Chennai. Yeah. Chennai. Uh, yeah. In India. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Chennai has a big department of plastic surgery at Stanley Medical College. And if I am right, uh, Professor Venkata Swami was one of the uh, first professors from Stanley Medical College hand surgery. Yeah. 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 Okay. Professor Toss, I think that's all the questions that we have. Thank you for that fantastic lecture. Thank a lot you of experience much. and uh, from your uh, great, uh, I mean, your surgical skills are exemplary and we've g learned a lot from that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See Bye. you. Ciao.